<clears throat> Howdy, and welcome to Burkentool Garage. 85 Ram Charger. Got the slant 6 out. Got the cylinder head off. So this week, we're going to be going over tearing the cylinder head down, doing an analysis on it. I'm going to show um, a real low budget way that I use to check the CCs on a cylinder head just to get some sort of ballpark. You know, where, where are we at with it? So the, the head will need to be decked. The block's going to need to be decked. The question is, how much do I need to deck it? Well, I'm going to have to know how far down the piston is in the hole and what my uh, cylinder head CCs look like, right, to, to answer that question. We're going to dive into what the ports look like on it, what kind of uh, horrible things the factory <laughs> did, you know, casting stuff down in there, poor machining, stuff like that that could just be cleaned up on the head. You get a little bit of free horsepower and torque and just you know, make it flow better, right? That's what we're going to be diving into, so let's just jump to it. <laughs> Okay, let's take a peek at the cylinder head. Uh, you see I got some stuff out uh, over here. Got my lights going, and hopefully we can see down in here pretty good. Uh, we're just gonna look at what uh, what it looks like down inside the ports. We're on the bold side. There's some glaring <laughs> issues. Now, what I'm gonna do on this head, I'm not gonna do what you'd really call cylinder head porting. What I like to call it is cleanup, because porting is that's way, way, way more in depth than I know how to do. But we're gonna look at some areas here. So let's look right here first. So if we look right there, we can see that the bowl comes in and then it, it lips out and then comes in, right? So you can see that lip right there. So that kind of goes around right about to there. So that's easy, easy flow right there to get, taking that out. Uh, around this side, it, it don't look all that bad. I may just do a cleanup around here. There's nothing really all that bad, but mainly that lip right there is what I'm going to touch here. Now, if we look down into the bowl by the valve guide, we have this casting where they just spot faced it right here. Uh, that can be radiused out and just smoothed out right there. Uh, that uh, that sharp edge and it's coming to put a radius on this. Now, porting you would actually go in and shape this. I don't know how to do that correctly, so I'm not gonna mess with it. Uh, I'm just gonna just clean it up, maybe do a texture on here, and that's it. Leave it alone. Uh, there's like some stuff down in here, casting, just casting gunk, you know. I'll take that out. No, no need to have that in there. So we kind of see the same thing on the exhaust port over here, just needs a little bit of a radius. Looks a little better. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to reshape it, but it still has that same lip coming around. All right, let me set you right there. So if we look right, you can probably see now all these sharp edges, multiple angles and stuff in there. There's a lip right in there, double lip in there. So this is what I'm going to smooth out. I'm not going to hog anything out or make it bigger or reshape. Just simply get rid of all the stuff that don't need to be in there. See, there's another lip right there. So if we look at that, I'll get my tool. It's actually coming around and it bulges out and then we come back in. So it comes out and then comes back around. So that can be radiused out and blended with the seat right there, which is kind of dirty. Needs to be, let's see if we can Oh yeah, that smudged it real good. So we can see the edge where the valve was right there. So this whole area can be blended all the way around, pretty much all the way around through here. That can be blended in, especially in this area. There's a lot. It's probably an eighth inch right there of just crud. Uh, not crud, but just cast iron. So that's kind of what I'm gonna, gonna do there. The chamber, if we look at the chamber 
we can see where the ring seal is from the head and it comes right up to the edge except for around in here so there's not much i can do as far as i can do a slight radius in there but i'm going to go into sealing really fast if i do that so i can do a little bit of radius on the chamber but there ain't much to really do there uh like i said uh, an actual head porter could do all kinds of stuff with this but that i'm not one of them uh the other thing we can see there's a pretty good distance right there so there's a lot of meat on here that can be taken off with just decking a block. Um, if we look at the valve, this is where the valve sits in there. If we were going to go in and try to do some valve shrouding, we can see that the, the factory, they already cut this a little bit, and that's all you can get because we see that there's, there's no more to radius out of that. So that's all the shrouding valve shredding i can get out of that right there i could probably come in here and do a little bit more even it up to there uh right around i have to look at some videos i usually don't do this part right here but i feel pretty confident i can come in here and and get that pretty close and radius that out a little bit and get some gains uh nothing i can do on the exhaust side it's already there i'm gonna come in and smooth this if we look in here there's a little machine lip where they kind of tried to shroud it a little bit and it has a lip there so i can smooth that out as far as going oversized valves i i don't see any real benefit to going to oversized valves you're just you're just going to make this shrouding issue that is not fixed for the stock valve size even worse so are you are you really getting any more flow with a bigger valve if it's all shrouded in at least not low speed flow anyway so i'm getting ready i have the head set up got my level out we can see we got the head pretty close to level i'm going to cc one of these chambers and see what i got that'll help me determine uh you know if i know the volume of this that'll help me determine how much i need to take off the deck now i already went through and looked on the block and i know how far down the piston is in the hole so that also tell me the other half of the equation of how much i can take off the block right so uh that's one of the little things i'm going to add up because i'm definitely i'm going to deck both of them how much and that'll answer that question mm, yeah we got the water tension there come on got to break the water tension surface tension all right so we need just a little bit more That's 55 right there, and we're barely, barely on the edge here, so it could use just a little bit more. Looking at it, checking my level. So I'm looking at the, uh, it's going to bubble just a little bit, right? Because it's water, that's what it does. So I'm going to call that about a 60. You know, you can get your Brett's and all that if you're really trying to get down to the CC. But honestly, this right here, I'm within a couple of CC's. So I'm going to call it a 60. So I could be anywhere from 58 to 62 on this, right? But anyways, uh, yeah, yeah, that's just a little simple trick you can do just to give you a ballpark. Like this right here, I think the book value said around 50 to 54 uh, this one is definitely on the big side of that, of that 54. Uh, I, I don't know where I got that at. That might not even be accurate. Uh, this one was good 58, 60, maybe even 62. You know, it, uh, it's definitely on the large side. So. Okay, I'm going to check the valve guides. That nothing grounds breaking here, just just something basic. Just got a little bit of oil. I coat it right quick. Put it in there, and what I'll do, I'll put my, you know, still got a little bit of oil on my finger. I'll put it over the the valve uh, guide over there, so it seals. Seal that 
I mean, I'm pulling it fairly good and it pulls it back in. That's what you want to see. The other thing I like to do is just kind of see how much slops in there. there. There should be a little bit because it, you know, it rides up in there and it needs a little bit of oil coating. So especially get it right up there, right where it's going to be in the lift range. I don't feel hardly any slop in there. So that's what I like to see. So that valve, even though it's 1977, is still good. Now my exhaust valve over here, I'm already looking at the little indent in there. I don't know if that's a machined indent. I'll have to clean that up to find out. So we're gonna do a little bit of oil on that. Same thing. Put in the exhaust guide. Get it in there. And it it's not it's not really doing that at all. I can just pull it. it has a little bit of resistance. When I put it in there definitely a lot more slop in it the other thing i've done is down into the port i took my um scribe and when i put it in there you can see of, of course where the valve goes in and i marked it so that's right about where'd my mark go right there is where that butts up to the guide so all this right here is actually in the guide up in there so i'm going to clean this up but i don't think it's supposed to look like that but i'll clean it up and see what we got right there but i may need to replace this the other thing i'm looking at is don't look like it had a good seal seal that's not clean in there that's just carb all carboned up right where it's supposed to seal so we look at the intake and you can see it still has shiny on there. Of course, you know, it's crudded up because it needs to be cleaned good. Uh, I might not have cleaned it real good when I did it the first time, you know. <laughs> but uh, we're going to fix that. So that, that's just kind of how you test right there. So this one was good. This one, eh, not, not so much. So I'm probably going to be replacing those. I was going to take it to the machine shop, but honestly, they're going to do the same thing. Uh, they're not going to put any measurement device or anything on there. They're going to just do that uh, pretty much um, Okay, well, I'm going to continue disassembling that I'm going to show you what I did on the other side there uh, get that shot and uh, We'll wrap the whole uh, valve guide thing now. I'll check all of these and see which ones are good and bad, but so far Intake I'll keep exhaust. I need to swap that out The intake valves, uh, they seem pretty good, especially the ones on the end. And as I got in a little further, they got a little worse, but I think uh, I think those are gonna do uh, pretty good on those exhaust. They just, <laughs> they're not good. They're not good. So I gotta come up with a plan for that. I asked them uh, kind of how they wanna go about it. If they wanna just put a whole new guide in there or if they wanna line the guides, that'll be up to them what they wanna do. So that'll tell me kind of where I want to go, what valve stem size. I could probably feasibly go one size smaller. So I think that's three eighths. So it'd be five sixteenths. And the next size down is like a eight millimeter. I think that's how that goes. Um, no, it might be a 32nd. That's what it might be. So it might be, let's see, a three eighths would be, uh, let's see here, 12 32nd. So 11 32nd would be one size down and the five sixteenths, eight millimeters, like the same size if I got my math right there. Uh, Cause sixteenth of an inch is quite a bit. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'll uh, see what they say and then that'll help me determine which exhaust valve I want. Again, I'm not gonna go any bigger just because 
I had an exhaust valve in there and I was playing around with a quarter inch shank. And uh, I might show this one where I do the heads and start doing a little porting in there. And there's, there's, there's no room in there to go bigger valve. There's not enough room in this chamber the way they have it set up for the valves they got. <laughs> as far as, you know, a shrouding and your low lift flow standpoint. Um, yeah, so I, I definitely don't want to go any bigger. So I had some ideas on there for the eight millimeter. Uh, the 11 30 seconds is just a Chevy valve. So, but that's, the exhaust is like a 1.36 or something like that uh, size. So that's, it might be a little hard to find that one in the length that I need. But that's what I'm gonna research and then uh, I'll play around with it and I have my head so I can mock it up. I got my stock springs and everything, so I'll mock up whatever I want in there, the retainers, locks, and all that. And then that'll tell me what my spring height is. Uh, and then I can go from there. We can always mill in a little bit. If I don't have enough spring height, I can mill it in. But if it's too long of a valve, then you gotta shim it and things get a little meh, not quite nice uh, once you start adding too much shim. So, well, that's, that's what I got the research there, and uh, I'm just gonna go on to uh, the next step of cleaning up valves, start to clean up the head, get with the machine shop, do my research on there.